Whenever I talk about something negatively, I know that the people behind it mean well. They don't want to make people angry, per se. They just want to make a good product, or at least a product successful enough to make money. money. And that's what everyone involved in making media wants to do. These people are probably decent people who intended to make media for more than just simple commercialist reasons. That is not the case today! <laughs> this movie was made for simple commercialist reasons. This is Legends of Oz, Dorothy the Tone. An animated sequel to the 1949 film, this movie was nothing more than a big budget scam. If you don't believe me, go watch the Electric Dragon 505 videos about it in the links below. But to make a long story short, two producer bros, Lion and Lauren Killer, along with a few friends, managed to scam thousands of investors into giving them money to make an adaptation of the book Dorothy of Oz by Lars Lewis Baum, the great grandson of Al Frank Baum. They promised to make an animated franchise with two more movies and a TV show, but when the film Al Frank bombed, <laughs> okay, I'll stop, that plan was thrown out the window. And they blamed the failure of the film on the Hollywood studio trying to pay clicks to make bad reviews of the movie, gaslighting audiences and the thinking that it was bad, allowing them to run off of the money. So come on guys, let's walk down the yellow brick road to Legends of Oz. Kill me. Now before we start, I'd like to mention how the original Wizard of Oz is one of my favorite movies. It's creative, beautifully designed, well learned and imaginative, and the characters and their personalities are incredibly likable. I also think that this story should be told in animation form a bit more to make it really work better and to be more believable and bring the fantastical world of Oz to life more. Animation could do a lot of things live action can't do, well at least at the time before the movie came out with its revolutionary effects. So animation can do everything, the Wizard of Oz is a classic, what could go wrong? Every. Single. Thing. After a three minute long credit sequence, why is it that long? This just feels like we're wasting time, standing on the names of the actors who warp themselves into this mess. Like Dan Aykroyd, Baldur, Peters, Mount Salt, Hugh Dancy, Kelsey Glamour, Patrick Stewart, come on! So after that, we learn that the Emerald City is in danger, oh no. The Scarecrow tells the Tin Man and the Lion that an evil Cestor has stolen the broomstick of his sister, the Lady Wicked Witch of the West. Now, in order to give the Teal's flaws, they gave them flaws that affected what they wanted in the first movie. The Scarecrow is a know-it-all, the Lion is too reckless, and the Tin Man is too emotional. Look, movie, you do realize that the Wizard didn't really change anyone, right? He already had brains, hearts, and nerve. They were just told what they were truly made of. There is a sequel to the first film, and it doesn't even understand the first film much. So in order to save Oz, the Scarecrow uses his invention, the LGBTQ movie, oh great, now people are going to target this movie for being woke in order to contact Dorothy. Be that, but with all of Oz at risk, I need you two to stand guard while I try to contact Dorothy. Whoa, 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 contact Dorothy? How? I'm a genius, remember? This animation is... Alright, it's well made, landled, and the character designs are pretty good. However, this isn't what I would call fetal worthy. Maybe for a directed video film it's pretty good, but for a theatrical film, not so much, Chief. Meanwhile, back in Kansas, Dorothy's farmhouse has been ravaged by the tornado. Okay, if this takes place shortly after the events of the first, why does it look like it's in modern times? A city government appraisal comes over and condemns the fall house, as the whole town is now a disaster area, and they decide to give the girls an eviction on notice so they have to move. Dorothy doesn't want to leave and decides to fix the place with no avail. Speaking of Dorothy, she's voiced by Leah Marcel, and the more and more she sung, the less and less interested I became in watching Glee, so I am never going to watch Glee. I hope you're happy, movie! Oh yeah, have I mentioned? This film is a musical! Now I need to get something very clear. Instead of playing the songs, since the copyright issues, I'm going to just describe them to the audience. Yeah, yeah, I know that sucks, but I'm doing you a favor, okay? Okay. This is a happy, upbeat, peppy song, and it's not very good. Ah, uh, the beat is pretty mediocre. The lyrics are instantly forgettable, and Leah Marcel doesn't sound that interested singing it. Yeah, 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 see, I'm pretty sure she's a good singer, but this one just doesn't work for me. 
So basically, Dolphy sees more people leave the town, while Rainbow, even more targets for the light wing, comes over and scoops Dolphy and Toto up. Then the Rainbow are holographs of her three friends, as the Scarecrow tries to explain the situation to Dolphy, but the message is cut short when the Flying Monkeys and Oz break through the door, and the Lion, Tin Man, and Scarecrow have to move so they won't be fucked. Dorothy is then dropped in Oz by the Rainbow, and is determined to get to Emerald City so she can help her friends. Meanwhile, at the Zestal's castle, Blender the Good Witch is captured and confirmed by the Zestal, who has a sister's boomstick with a stolen orb, which is the Wicked Witch of the West's Crystal Ball that helps control it. Break. The Zestal has captured the important leaders of Oz, and has encased them in glass cases like puppets, much like the funny Gamilo del Toro film. Chris. Pine. Glinda warns the Zestal that Dorothy would stop him, yet he isn't friend because he has magic, which he used to turn Glinda into a marionette and encase her in a glass case with the others. Speaking of the Zestal, he's way too comedic. Like, I get it, he's a comedy villain, but he's so ridiculous that it's not even that planning. Compare and contrast Big Jack Horner from Puss in Boots to Last West. Jack is also incredibly humorous, but he's still genuinely frightening because of factors like his large size, the amount of magic power he has, his lack of empathy for others, etc. etc. A good example of this is when he shows literally no remorse for killing several of his own men and then listens to the only person to call him out for it. You're an irredeemable monster! Oh, oh, what took you so long, idiot? <laughs> The Jester uses the crystal ball to locate Dorothy, uses a spell to change the signs of Candy County, the he was approaching, and then he sends his flying monkeys to attack Dorothy's friends. Speaking of Dorothy, he meets a morbidly obese owl named Wiser. The only three jokes they tell with him is fat, he can't fly, and he talks a whole lot. Whoa, you are a really fa- fabulous owl. <laughs> oh, you're very kind. I mean, uh, I usually hear fat. Wiser helps Dorothy and Toto on their quest by pointing out the way to find the yellow brick road that will lead to Emerald City, and they manage to make it to Candy County, which has one major rule. Do not eat the candy. Or can you? <gasps> they must have changed the rules! Follow me! And so, we end up getting a song about eating candy. Now don't get me wrong, unlike the last song, it is not forgettable. But that's mostly because, uh, how may I put this? The song is annoying as all hell! The lyrics are grating, the music is grating, and there was this real superimposed gestal singing in the background while the flying monkeys sing backup vocals. It's absolutely embarrassing! After Dorothy, Weisel, and Toto finish sound down, wait a minute, so dogs void chocolate? Eh, who cares? We meet Muscle Mallow, who left the trio for leaving the candy alongside his chocolate soldier. As Dolphy, Toto, and Wiseau were being taken to court, the original trio was climbing the castle of the Emerald City until they were ambushed by the monkeys. So the scarecrow comes up with a plan. <gasps> Lip Tin Man, the part to make noise, jump off the towel, make a pass out of the battle, get Tin Man's head back, and get capsules in a sack. And this was all to distract the pet monkeys from the towel just for Dolphy's sake later on in the film. It's so dumb. Oh, it's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! Meanwhile, Dolphy, Toto, and Wiseau are candy court, overseen by the Honorable Judge Jawbreaker. So Dolphy and Wiseau are about to get executed, but that's falling to the garbage once the judge realizes who Dolphy is. Now, this girl is one of the greatest heroes Oz has ever known. She's well above reproach. You should know that. Everyone knows that. Okay, three things. Okay, first of all, why well, invest in my beloved? Two, is she a bad judge if you just let famous people go for being above the law? And three, wait, 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 wait. So we didn't recognize who Dorothy was immediately? Dolphy is one of the greatest heroes all has ever known, and you can't recognize her face? After this, Mouse and Mallow does a complete 180 and joins Dolphy on her quest. They eventually make it to dainty China country. What a great wall! It's made of China! What a great wall of China! Here we meet the China princess who's looking for a pseudo. She doesn't like any of them, as he sinks so high that she basically kills them. Hell, the only reason why our heroes got in is because Mouse and Mallow was posing as a suitor for her. 
speaking of Muscle Mouse Mellow, he's up next and he actually impresses Hall. It's not the worst thing in the world, but there's not much of an actual beat, the Dilly Slope and the Lilix are pretty forgettable. Okay, so Muscle and the Princess are love interests, but they don't have any good chemistry. The Princess has a superiority complex, and the Mouse is looking for a superior, but they don't know that they should treat each other as equals if they want to fall in love with each other, and not as Commander and Commandee. Oh, and there's this earthquake that's caused by the Jester light on f***ing Kale, and the palace is destroyed. And so, the China Princess pins this on Dorothy, of course! Now, just a minute! Don't deny it! You wanted a little shortcut, so you forced your way in and brought the Jester's anger with you! I don't know any Jester. Oh my god, I can't stand the tiny princess. All she does is bits, whine, and moan. Bits, whine, and moan. She completely blames Dorothy for something out of her control, mind you, and when she learns that she is Dorothy, as in Dorothy Gale, the Witch Slayer, she doesn't even show any gratitude for saving the entire land of Oz! Hmm, so this is the famous girl who vanquishes wicked witches. I thought you'd be taller. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You Good lord, at least Lucy Van Pelt is on the kettle kind of just as for a bitchiness. This cow gets nothing! Oh, and uh, the China Princess does a complete 180 as well and joins her crew. Back at the Zestel's palace, the Tin Man, Scarecrow, and Nyan are capsuled and are in the clutches of the Zestel, who takes them to where he has the leaders of Oz as puppets. He tells them the backstory of being close to be the fool all the time, and how he desired his sister's power. Fool song, of course! This is the worst song of the bunch in my personal opinion. The beat is wonky and annoying, the lyrics are generic and unmemorable, and for some very odd, very inexplicable reason, she make a line with, my sister was frightful and spitefully made me a clown. What? So yeah, the Jester changed them up in torture devices. The Scarecrow is put in a wheel while a fire rolls underneath. The Tin Man is put in an underwater cage to lust. And the Lion is put in a slinking cage? Dorothy and her new friends come across a broken bridge with no possible way to get across to the other side. The only option they have is building a boat at wood, but surprise, if you live in a land where trees talk, that idea isn't going to be well received among said trees. The trees, causing Dorothy as a girl who assaulted one of your uncles, pelts them with apples. Luckily, an old tree named Tug offers himself to bring up a boat to help them. The game begins, building a hope with help from mice and beavers, and, and in no time at all, a mighty boat was built and they finally set sail for Emerald City. Foo! Song! Oh! Fucking! Joy! This doesn't sound like a song for a theatrical film. It sounds like a song for a straight to TV film. And not a good straight to TV film. It's so generic and unmemorable that I didn't even care anymore. They arrive in Animal City and go inside the castle where they find the LGBTQ movie. Dolphy plays the message left behind by the Scarecrow, which tells us the things we already know, and suddenly, a bolt of green smoke appears as the Zestel makes fun of Dolphy before unleashing his flying monkeys on the clue. They'll cheat back to Tug, and they all sail away while avoiding the monkeys and going into a cave to lose them. Inside, they're surrounded by fireflies that guide them on their way. But, it's a trap by the Zestel, they'll hang straight to all that waterfall. Tug falls down the waterfall and he opens to the gang on shore, leaving the China princess in pieces. Dorothy, not wanting her friends to get killed, decides to go out to face the Jester alone. Now, have you noticed the main issue with this film? Simple. It's the same story as the first one, only bad. A fantasy musical where a young girl goes on a journey with her three newfound friends and a dog, while the villain harasses them along the way. The original Oz characters had some and likability to them, something these characters solely lack. The old characters did believable accents that made the audience believe they actually wanted what they wanted. A morning muscle Mickey Mouse Mellow, try saying that three times fast, stays with the China Princess as Wiser goes for help, where he sums up the cards to take flight. Whoa! A fightless bold in a family movie flying? What about that? Now, Muscle Mal begins to repair the China Princess, and the two sail the do I like another song! I don't even know what to say about this dull as hell song. 
I don't care if this was little more than a money laundering scheme, but they have at least put more effort into any aspect of these songs. These songs are repetitive, cookie cuddle, bullying, and overall just outdated. So yeah, the China Princess survives, hippity holay. Dorothy arrives at the Justice Castle where she meets the puppets of Glinda and the All Eyes Beatles, and the Justice confronts Dorothy and expresses his gratitude for basically molding his sister. Toto bites Lope and a clown falls on the Justice and his monkeys as Dorothy lunch with friends, Scarecrow, Tinnyman, and Lion, who wake because they're happy to see their friend again. Head he runs off with the wand as the Hellboys are not alive to the castle, resulting in a generic battle scene that isn't clever, charming, or even at least funny, and goes on for way too long. The flying monkeys go, Stay you guys, I'm going him! When it just regains his orb, and conquers with Tornado to suck up Dorothy. No, not like that, not like that! Dorothy heads up the tower and grabs the scepter, and a green girl spreads across the land, breaking the spell. Glenda and the ladles return to normal, the scepter is broken, and the Zestler gets his dust results. Peace is absorbed to the land of Oz, the friends rejoice, I don't give two shits, and his movie is nearly done! For the first time ever, I'm at a loss for words. Which reminds me, there's actually a very funny story about- Shut up, I don't like you wise. Glenda uses a spell to send Dolphy home, and when Dolphy goes home, he got a tasty bit of irony. Remember how this movie was made from scamming multiple investors out of money in order to make an animated franchise? Dorothy convinces the town to fight back against the appraisal from the star of the film and snatches his wallet, revealing that he's actually a scam artist with multiple IDs to help him in his crimes, causing him and his assistant to be arrested. Wow, not only is this movie unfunny, generic, bland, often listened to, and outdated as all hell, but it's also hypocritical. The newest big budget anime franchise, ladies and gentlemen. Legends of Oz Dorothy's Return is not just a greedy, cynical, and morally warped scam, but it's also a painfully bad, helpless, and all an overall horrible piece of corporate trash. The songs are mindless, the characters are flat and boring, and the story is as confusing and inconsistent as you can get. I'm actually glad that this was an absolute f***ing failure, both from a quality and moral standpoint. I give Legend of Oz Dorothy's Return this channel's so far first one peanut gallery out of ten great walls of China. Until next time, this is the Crazy Clola flying away and wishing that Kelsey Glamour, wherever he is in the world right now, is having a decent day because he didn't dissolve to win a glassy for this piece of trash film. Trapped alone in a giant rainbow. Surrounded by colors, it must be nice and horrible. Oh, maybe he did. Meh.